Oh yeah. So you want to put in a heat pump. I wanted to put in a heat pump to get off Russian oil and this is my journey. So let's start with the SEII website. And uh, you get to the heat pump section and the very first thing you need to do is get what's called a technical assessment. It costs you about 350 euro. You get a grant if you're successful. And what is it? Well, basically it's a report that looks a bit like this. Well, this it looks exactly like this actually, because this is one. And it will uh, summarize the state of your house, its current BER rating and what you have to do to get it up to the level required by the SEAI in order to get the grant. So my house originally has an energy rating of B2 and these quite advanced reports you know, this one is 13 pages long, go through every single room and ventilation and heat loss and so on. They come up with a particular figure. And the figure is called the HLI. And in order to get the grant, it must be less than two. Now, it is really get, difficult to get your house to less than two watts in heat loss. So uh, that's basically a new, a new build. And um, it's an A1 rated house. But... In terms of renovation, you could get it to 2.3 or less with a couple of insulation upgrades, substantial ones admittedly, and uh, then you're in the running for the grant. Now, I don't have time to do that, and there are not enough tradesmen around, there's not enough knowledge of heat pumps in Ireland right now, and, even, and they're being put in everywhere across Europe, so I decided to basically do this myself. I am not going to do any of these upgrades but I do what I do want to do is basically this this is my current system and it's an oil based boiler it's a super simple zone one all the rads have already upgraded to increase the surface area which means they'll generate or rather emit sufficient heat even at a lower delta, delta T or temperature differential um, which is the case with heat pumps so the boiler could be coming out at too hot to touch 65 75 85 degrees and heats up all the boilers but all the radiators rather but with a heat pump it um, might only come out with 55 so we increase the surface area of those i've done that bit already i liked my simple system because the rest of the family they can they know how to use the programmer the programmer simply engages a vote free contract which inter contact which in turn turns on the boiler and the pump and of course the existing gubbins expansion vessel pressure relief mains top up air release valve and so on i wish to reuse all of that so i wanted to fit into this existing system with the least amount of hassle i didn't have any need for domestic hot water i didn't have any need for uh, i don't have underfloor heating so uh, if you look at some of the vendors and specifically i'm looking at samsung now this is directly from the samsung manual this is one of their typical installation architectures uh, you could have solar collector and a solar pump which would supply uh, heat to your domestic hot water tank i am not doing that so i'm uh, that's not required in europe especially they will always have they will put in a booster that could be a six kilowatt booster in case it's so cold that the heat pump can't cope and how that works is it's basically just a resistive element in the tank that would turn on if it's super cold I'm not doing that either. A buffer tank, because during the summer you don't need heating, but you still need hot water. Uh, let's say your heating is on the floor heating and you've turned it off. Well, then that would massively reduce the flow to the heat pump and the heat pump requires a minimum flow through it in order to continue to function. So the solution is what's called a balancing vessel or a buffer vessel. And these are effectively essential to put in if you've got underfloor heating and if you turn it off a lot. So, and they help maintain the minimum flow to the heat pump. I'm not doing that either because all of my rads are open all the time. I have large heat flow as it is, nothing ever gets turned off. So don't need that, don't have that. I do have this. I will need this control system. I will put in additional air vents. Air vents. I will reuse the existing expansion tank, safety release, air release. I will add another pump and of course the strainers and pressure relief valves in fact they get delivered depending on who you buy the heat pump from they get delivered with it so just a word on that you won't even be able to buy a heat pump 
without a technical assessment from what I can see. So there's a lot of bureaucracy there. But once you get your tech assessment, you can go to someone like Chadwick's. I went to Chadwick's. Chadwick's in turn will get, in this case, a Samsung heat pump from Juul. Juul will uh, give you a package. Um, in my case, I bought the uh, the monoblock Samsung outdoor unit. Basically, it's an 8 kilowatt unit. As well as the control kit and the Juul will also supply antifreeze and uh, strainers uh, and one inch valves because it's one inch connection so you're going to have to buy a lot of additional compression fittings to convert to 28 mil for example okay the new system is going to look like this in this case i still have my boiler and programmer thermostat but now i once i turn on the heat pump it also turns on two divert valves here that cut into the existing supply. So the red is the hot water going into the system and blue is the cold water coming back to return. So these two divert valves will automatically swap over to the supply and return on the heat pump. Um, these are the supplied manual valves with the heat pump. The heat pump has its own controller and HMI uh, little control panel. Um, it's also supplied with a filter. This is the additional pump I put in and importantly we have a flow meter. And the flow meter is monitored, the flow in the return line in this case is monitored by the heat pump to make sure it's sufficiently high. It's mon monitored by the controller rather to make sure it's sufficiently high for the heat pump to work. Um, other than that, the supply goes out, cuts into the same line with the same expansion vessel, pressure relief, and so on. I do have an air release valve at the top point on the supply. A word on the two pumps in series on the return line. I put most of the additional fittings. Strainers is on the return line to protect the heat exchanger inside the heat pump. Pump is on the return line because, as a rule, you should have the flow meter as far away from pumps as possible you don't want them disturbed and the same goes for the the air release so i put the air release on the pressure side and the flow meter is before the pump on the return now when the programmer calls for heat the full free contract switches which in turn the controller um starts up both pumps in parallel now the, these are in series on the return line which in turn drives water through the heat pump fan starts on the heat pump and there are special algorithms called water law in inside here in this controller that um speed up or slow down the heat pump to to make them energy efficient and then they send your hot water back into the system so one final thing on the rads i upgraded the rads to stale rad rads which i picked up from um, heat merchants at tala uh the k2 type 22 ones basically just a lot more surface area so you can see that they can bang out a lot more watts and uh, so that's it so now let's go out and have a look at the live system we wanted to use the existing horseman um, in order to be able to set the temperature for the heat pump all the radiators are upgraded just to the latest style rad PT plus. They're steel, they're not aluminium. Yes, they take a little bit longer to heat up, but they also take a little bit longer to cool down, so much for muchness really. Here is the external insulation of the Samsung 8 kilowatt monoblock heat pump. So power comes down to the isolator over here. Behind the scenes. We have a minimum distance of 300 mil here, it's very important. In this case, we just have it on a strong unistop uni frame, and we have a minimum 1.5 meters to exhaust the air out in this case. Um, it's facing on to uh, public green. The two pipes, the one on the top, fully insulated, is, is um, water, hot water supply, and the one on the bottom is return. Basically, that's it existing boiler and the two divert valves so basically we have supply from the heat pump here comes in divert valve sorry this is just two-way valve and um, but we do have a non-return valve here to prevent any backwash into the boiler probably overkill but anyway this is supply this was the existing expansion vessel and uh, main supply here so we just left that the way it is we just tapped into it here at, at the um the junction to the boiler 
Now the return, so this is the existing return pump with its filter and then air release here and then we tapped in here with the three, bay, three way divert valve and the default position is into the boiler but once it's activated it comes back out through the return. In terms of the electrics we have a separate isolator for the heat pump. In addition we have a junction box because not only was, is the heat pump uh, powered on by the switch but also uh, two of the valves. The valves and the pumps are actually um, powered via interface relays so in the case of the pump either the boiler system or the heat pump can turn it on therefore we used interfa interface relays in here and similarly for the valves we use interface relays. Probably overkill but just good practice. Pumps come over here and this is the main MIM controller and this is the wired unit down here. So we have supply in on these um, shall we say vibration proof pipes. Pretty ugly and then we're going from one inch that's an adapter into 28 mil and then here we have their isolation valve that is required and in this case air release and this is supply all the way back to the house circuit. The return line as you can see here has a lot more on it so the return comes down here is the, the valve now we have the strainer or filter as I called it in the previous video and then the secondary pump and then back a bit further on the return line we finally have our flow meter so just to reiterate if the flow doesn't pick up any flow then the heat pump system will be shut off so let's go and turn it on so we're just back at the program we're inside and I'm just going to force up the temperature until the old free contract gets pulled in. There it is. So at this point, there should be an order to the heat pump start. Let's go ahead and have a look. Okay, you can see that uh, this first pump has started. Let's take a wander over here. And yes, second part. I'm not sure if you can hear that in the background, but the pump has, the fan rather, has started. So the two pumps are on. And we are in heat mode and you can see that the current water outlet temperature is 18.5. Let's go out and have a look at the fan. Okay, so you can hear it, it's not that loud, at least not yet. And uh, mind you, it's quite cold here. Um, so there you go, so that's, uh, that's how it sounds like. It's slowly but surely spinning up. I'm not sure if you can see the fan moving inside. Temperature is now at 22 degrees. You can feel it getting warm. This water law controls the temperature, so because the temperature outside is quite warm at the moment, it's not going to go above 35 degrees. If the temperature outside was a lot colder, it would in turn change the set point. I'm going to report back in winter to tell you how it's actually working. Okay, we're back inside and the fan has now been on for a couple of minutes. Let's have a look at what's happening here. Okay, you can see that the water outlet temperature is at 29 degrees. In other words, here. Yeah, and so now we can feel it at 29. And uh, so the rats inside will be getting that. And it will take hours for them to use up that at that rate. But the water law is outside ambient temperature dependent. So if it's much colder outside, it will react accordingly. 